the shadow of the majestic Rocky Mountains, Peter Larson has built a weekend retreat for his family. There are a lot of people that have cabins. My cabin just happens to be buried underground. Living in the constant fear of a nuclear attack, he works tirelessly to safeguard his loved ones by preparing for every possible contingency. And it doesn't mean that I'm an extremist. But are these extreme preparations enough? Peter Larson is a traveling salesman who lives in a neatly manicured suburb of Salt Lake City with his wife, children, and grandchildren. His life is typical of millions of Americans, except... I've spent the better part of my life preparing for a nuclear holocaust. He's a prepper. I believe there's a very high probability of a nuclear attack on, on the U.S., probably from the hands of a terrorist. The greatest nightmare that I can imagine is a nuclear holocaust where a terrorist organization that manages to get their hands on a delivery system that enables them to detonate the weapon above Omaha, Nebraska. Prepper is someone like myself who prepares. And it doesn't mean that I'm an extremist. I simply decided that it was time to get a shelter for myself and my family. There's always a question of whether or not I'll be able to actually get to my shelter. My shelter's about an hour and 20 minute drive from here. When there's a nuclear attack, the fallout would be going primarily to the east as long as the prevailing winds continue to move in that direction. Subsequently, I have three routes. The rule of three guides many prepper plans. Peter has three modes of transportation, utilizing three different routes from his home to his shelter. To practice worst case scenarios, Peter will often leave his car and walk the last several miles to his bunker. One of the things about prepping is it has eliminated some hobbies. I don't golf, I don't bowl, I don't follow sports. Most of my time is focused on what can I best do to prepare my family for a nuclear holocaust. This is my bug out bag. I carry it with me everywhere I go. This bag has everything that I'm going to need to get myself back to my shelter. Fire starting equipment. I have a hand chainsaw, water filtration. If we're dealing with a with a breakdown in the system, there's a hostile environment, it's important that I have good clean water. I'm actually pumping this water through a ceramic filter. It's kind of like pumping water through a rock. So it's going to pretty well protect me from anything that's in the water. I currently have about 1,000 gallons of water stored. That'll last us about two months. By the end of the summer, I'll have another 1,000 gallons. That'll add another two months. Peter is meticulous and relentless in his planning. Along each of his possible routes, he has hidden critical provisions. This one, hidden on a friend's farm, is only a few miles from his bunker. The idea of a cache is simply to have additional supplies located along the way between my home and my shelter so that I can resupply myself with food, water, and necessities. This is also a place I can spend the night. Not only is it warm, it's also gonna be dry and comfortable. A successful salesman, Peter travels extensively. When he enters a new town or city, he is examining it through the dark prism of his survival. Anytime I spend time in a major metropolitan area, I'm always cognizant of the quickest way out because I look at the cities, quite frankly, as a death trap. My shelter is located in the foothills in a remote part of the state. This is quite a paradise. And I believe that in the event of a nuclear holocaust, this will continue to be a paradise. This is my bunker. I've specifically designed it and stockpiled it for my family. There are people, I suppose, that look at this and wonder why we would do such a thing. There are a lot of people that have cabins. My cabin just happens to be buried underground. This unit is a 50-foot long steel corrugated tube, 10-foot diameter in the floor. I have enough food, medical supplies, water, clothing to last my family at least a year. About five years ago, I decided that it was time to get a shelter for myself and my family. What are we having for dinner? Ramen and mac and cheese. We also use our shelter as a weekend retreat. Yeah. And so this becomes our, our cabin in the woods, so to speak. 
It's a place that, that we feel good just coming to. In the event of a nuclear holocaust, it's nice to have a place that you're comfortable with and has that beauty and serenity. Peter's extreme preparations to safeguard his family from a nuclear holocaust are never complete. He's constantly adding to his food and water stockpiles, sharpening his survival skills, and spending more and more money and time to strengthen his bunker. When the bomb drops, I'm gonna be 20 feet down in my shelter with my family. This door closed, locked in place. It's capable of withstanding the pressure of a fully loaded dump truck, 80,000 pounds of pressure on this door. It'll protect me from virtually anything that can happen. Peter is always assessing new risks, potential dangers, and possible countermeasures. There are still in the neighborhood of 2,000 nuclear weapons in the hands of the Russians. Another check. Trying to get me and check me. Chinese are building up their nuclear stockpile. The Iranians are coming on strong as well as the North Koreans. Mm. There are a lot of threats in this world. I think you just sold the farm, my friend. <laughs> Our expert has determined that your underground shelter has been sufficiently reinforced to protect you and 12 family members from a nuclear blast as close as one half mile from your site. You have enough food to last two years, been extensively trained in survival and self-defense skills, and your emergency evacuation plans are extremely well thought out. However, our expert calculates that you do not have enough water stored to ensure your survival. Six, six months, I do need 3,000 gallons of water. I'll take care of that. Also, your job with its extensive travel requirements breaks the prepper's cardinal rule of never separating yourself from your family and leaves you in a very vulnerable situation. Do you know, he's absolutely right. That, that's something that I've been uncomfortable with, and quite frankly, it's time for me to change jobs. Peter has taken our expert's advice and has begun the process of acquiring and storing additional water. Also, he's now actively looking for a new job that keeps him closer to home. <laughs>